Hey there everyone! Before we get started with the actual video, I would like to address a few key points that were left out during the shoot. What you're about to see is a video about the components that the ServiceNow platform offers to its customers in order to build operational resilience. A lot of companies these days are under the scrutiny of regulations such as DORA or SOX, to name a couple. The goal of these regulations is very simple. Companies need to be aware what is impacted when something happens. May it be an incident, a security vulnerability, or if we do simple change management. So without further ado, let's have a look how it works. Hey everyone, welcome to a new video in our CSDM series. I'm Michel Konter, Lead Strategic Advisor at Ina and Partners, and today I'm in Utah. I'm on my way to the Grand Canyon and I hope to take you along. And while doing so, I would like to talk about application services, because why not? Well, by now we all know what configuration items are, the hardware and software components that make up our IT environment. But how do they come together to deliver an application towards our organization? Let's first talk about services in general, because there is a distinction between business and technical services and application services. In order to do so, I will first talk about CSDM layers. That is a concept that we at i Partners use to better explain the CSDM framework to stakeholders in the organizations. CSDM domains are still perfectly fine, however, they help us better to model the data in the CMDB. So, the first CSDM layer is the architectural layer. It's pretty much the same as the CSDM design domain. However, it encompasses also foundational records such as the business process itself, because this is interesting for our business stakeholders as well as enterprise architects to define requirements for our business applications. Then we have the service layer. Well, the service layer is everything about the services that we deliver to our consumers, be it customers or end users. So this is where we document business, technical services, as well as their offerings and commitments. Then we have the operational layer. So this is really where our configuration items reside, but also the application service. The application service has no commitments and no offerings, but they rather bring together both worlds, the services world and the operational world. They are the bridge that we are looking for because bridging services and operations is what all this is about, right? A business needs to know what exactly is impacted if there is, for example, an outage or a security vulnerability. So let's take, for example, single sign-on. Um, we use SSO for a multitude of applications, for example, intranet portals. Also, we can implement it into our ServiceNow instance. And you can imagine if an SSO application service goes down, that a lot of other dependent application services might go down as well. So. By creating this holistic picture uh, and connecting application services uh, among themselves, we are able to pinpoint exactly what is affected if something goes wrong. So we understand now that application services represent instances of applications in our organization. They document thus transparently on one hand the dependencies, but also the data flow. So let's take our example of the SSO service. The SSO service might be represented by an application service which connects to a technical service offering. Here we document commitments such as availability. So these are on the operational side. Then we might have an intranet application service which is dependent on the SSO application service. Connecting the intranet application service to the business service offering, we can automatically trigger things such as SLAs, so our agreements that we have towards our consumer base. You might now say, hold on a minute. You said technical services are on the service layer, but they are on the operational side. And that is exactly the case, because in the end, technical services are services provided by operations towards the business, meaning they underpin business services. So now we know how application services connect services and operations in our CSDM framework. 
But uh, let's maybe have a closer look at the technicalities of an application service. What does it consist of? Because there are hardware CIs, there are application CIs, there are software CIs. So how does this all come together in ServiceNow CMDB? Wow, that was quite the intermission, wasn't it? I'm meanwhile back in Los Angeles, heading back to the airport, but let's wrap this up. Let's talk first about application CIs in our CMDB versus software CIs. Well, software CIs typically represent the software that is actually installed on our device. So, for example, on a web server that we are using for our intranet application, we might have uh, three versions of Tomcat installed, just for the sake of the argument. We can use uh, software asset management to inventorize this. However, it does not really tell us which one of these Tomcat installations is now used in our application service. Therefore, we have application CIs. Application CIs are thus the instance of a software that is running on a device, so occupying memory space, and it is part of an application. So that is then where we use application services to take the software components together with the hardware components where uh, they are running on, and then we map them into our application service. We can do this automatically, and you guessed it, with service mapping. And there you have it. This is how you build operational resilience on the ServiceNow platform, but also how to connect operations to services, so connecting IT and business. But before I close this video, I would also like to give a huge shout out to our partners of the N2 network. It's a network consisting of freelancers and entrepreneurs that are primarily specialized on the ServiceNow platform. We had an amazing blast at the Knowledge23 conference together with all the other partners, customers, and whoever I got to meet over there. You guys are amazing, and I hope to see you very soon again. That said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please like and subscribe. Do also leave your comments down below. Uh, we also have LinkedIn, so follow us there. And then, yeah, hope to see you next time.